beautiful, muggy <laughs> morning. I, I was not expecting this. I didn't need my but Justin jacket. Rose is wearing shorts. I didn't need to wear, uh, I didn't need to bring our jackets. I brought our jackets just in case. Because one year we did come, we forgot our jackets, and we had to buy jackets because it was so cold. Look at this view spot. Sun's about to come up. Look at that rock. That is cool. Oh, this is cool. You got a boat launch. Look at him crawling. We're gonna go look at the site the day before to check things out. I know, I know. <laughs> we are at the site. 5,000 people are gonna be here over the weekend. It's gonna be a lot more crowded than this. Oh, it's gonna be crazy. Look at that crane. We're coming today. To set up, we've got a bunch of DVDs we're giving to Homesteaders of America to just give away. I guess we'll check out our booth, talk to any vendors that we need to talk to. Henry is not thrilled. I am with one of my favorite companies, one of my favorite persons, <laughs> Premier One and Joe. Hi everyone. <laughs> How you doing Joe? I'm doing well, doing we, well. <laughs> you know, he's here displaying all his different nets. I couldn't do what I do, obviously, without these nets. These are amazing. I got rid of all our perimeter fences and this is all we do. We just move the animals and the sheep and the chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Inside of this now, <laughs> this is my go-to, the 93512. Yes. So, okay, Joe. Yep. I we had some, we had lambs in the spring. Yes. We want to harvest them in November. Mhm. Mm but two of them especially are half wild. Okay. So, how do I go about We've tried corralling them with this net. Yes. Into a pen, yep. not gonna work. Okay. They end up jumping through the net. Jumping through the net. What should I do to corral? Maybe we look at the catalog or maybe you have some ideas. You have a crook in your hand. I have hand. a crook in my hand. <laughs> I always find crooks handy. Yeah. Uh, and you so said, do I just what? Do I just get them on some alfalfa and then just crook them? Uh, that would be a good route. Um, just it, what it, what a crook does, it just extends your reach. Yeah. Uh, so that one would be about six, well, that was 58 inches, so almost six, yeah. five feet or so. And then if you have two at the same time, that's pretty helpful. Yeah. And that's just, um, it's just extremely helpful to use a crook when moving sheep because it okay. just extends your reach. You can help grab them. You can help direct them at the same time. Uh, the kind, of, the opinion at Premier is if you're working sheep without a crook, you're wasting time. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of how dependent we like are it. Do on them. Do you sell this crook? Uh, we do. That's, okay. uh, this one's a chestnut crook. This one's more uh, decorative. We have some that are built for wilder okay. animals, wilder sheep. Okay. Uh, you have a black one that's more... Uh, it's more, it's more it's like more this like material. The, yep. So it's a uh, which what kind of material is this? That is uh, PVC and it has okay. fiberglass running through. Yeah, it. I like the black one. Mm -hmm. The black one just has a fiberglass rod running through it. That's yeah. a pretty good one. I also like the uh, the red coat, the aluminum one that yeah. we carry as well. That's it's just light, easy handling, and if I bend it, I can bend it back into place. So how would you catch a? Can, do you have to be behind the sheep to catch it with a crook? I've caught them from behind. I've caught them from the side. Okay. Uh, from the front's not that it's easy no. with the crook. Okay. If you All get right. them behind the head and then be able to step and direct. And then okay. what helps is once you get their neck in place, you turn the crook. Ah. So you have like two points of pressure on the neck and okay. that just helps restrain them. And then can you, once you have it turned, you can actually, then, then what do you do? Do you go you step towards the sheep or do you pull it? So you got it, and you. then I, I keep pressure and I step uh -huh. towards them, and that works for me. Okay, and then how do you grab the sheep? Around the neck. Around, Around the, neck. the neck. And then. Okay. Then it's one hand on the front, one hand on the back. If you have a halter, that gives you a little added restraint on the animal as well. Okay. That helps. Um, but as far as. Handling them when they're wild. I know you have poultry net on the farm, and yeah. I think you have some larger uh, energizers. Yes. I would put them up in the net and put the higher jewel or higher output energizer yeah. on that so they are absolutely respecting the fence. Okay. 
and then narrow that up to where you want them to go. Ah. So if you're loading them into a corral or um, or another area along those lines, that just makes it a little smaller. The tightings, tighter spacings just has more visible barrier to them. And I also know you have that portable sheep corral too with all wire panels. Yep. Maybe you yep. can direct them into that. That would help. We've put up a funnel-like thing with a gate in there and then we can kind of pin them into a corner. Because mm -hmm. when we harvest, we don't want them running. Want we just want to grab them, pin them down, and then we slit their throat. Yep. Okay. Yep. So if you can get close enough with the so, crook. Okay. Can you get about five, six feet away? I might be able to. Okay. Which if, if, if beforehand, for a couple of weeks, I've put out some alfalfa. Yeah. And then catch them, pull them. Yeah. Down and done. Wow. Okay, I'm going to try that. All okay. right. You're going to have to send me a um, another crook. Okay. I can do that. We've long lost it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, it's they... not the quality that goes out. It's the chiddlers <laughs> that grab them and go. We're going to look in the catalog here, too, because I have some questions about the... The corrals. So you have these Those. corral systems. Look at that. Oh like, yeah. I don't need that for killing uh, five, six sheep a year. No, but it's nice to have if yeah. you have it. But yeah. for what you're doing, I it's overkill. Yeah. But they're so nice. Would it be good to have a few to like temporarily put up with a T post or something to corral them into the to the wrestling ring? Uh, yes. Is so my 16 by 16 pin? I do like uh, our Primagates. They're uh -huh. just a lightweight aluminum, very easy to handle. Okay. Uh, they they ship in two foot sections. Okay. So you have this both ends. This is a Primagate, ends, okay. And then it's four foot a, tall? Uh, that's the width. Height okay. should be in the 30 Yeah, that is not range. like four foot tall, okay. Yeah, they are. All right. I should know this better. And they don't jump it if excited. Uh, I haven't had that issue. Okay. Uh, so we have those in our... Um, okay. Have those in our lambing barn, and we do have some Romanov genetics and some other flighty breeds that okay. challenge it on occasion, but they've been pretty good for us. Um, okay. I want to say there's 36 inches off the top of my head. Okay. But that works well for us. Um, Primagates, lightweight, easy handling. I've used them in our uh, sheep barns before, just pulling across an alleyway or pulling across the barn, and then just using that as a big light funnel. Yeah. Because uh, we had enough of them to do that, so you had about 20 or 30 feet of panels, and that gives you a pretty uh, nice arm extension. How are they mounted here? How are they mounted to the ground? So these are these are just setting on the ground. Uh, okay. But we do have, uh, they're pinned together at the ends. And then that just keeps them stable. We are back home. Had a good visit with Premier One. Our stew is ready. That looks good. It's a chuck roast. Yes. Getting copious amount of meats in there, Becky. We heard on the Nourishing Traditions podcast on the way up here that it's better to eat the big meal at lunch. So I'm gonna do my OMAD one meal a day at lunch, which I think will be better because I won't be so I won't I won't be like hungry all day. And then it's easier to digest. You digest before you go to bed. How is it, Lily? You like it? Good. Topped with lots, copious amounts of butter. butter. I like it. Thank you. Hey, can y'all pass the Redmonds down, please? This is hamburger, guys. Yeah. Oh, good. Get in, get up, please. He's so good. Mm He's -hmm. the best beef we ever have. Got yeah, Jersey and American milk and Devon mix. Mm. Hot tub. How is it? Good. Feeling good? Yeah. Look at that view. We're going to sit in a hot tub and watch. That's nice. Cool. Watch this boy crawl. There we go. All right. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. He <laughs> doing it. Yeah. I forgot to cut my nappy hair yes, before we left. Did. My beard. My hair. Show him the... Show them the one on my the long neck. hair. You have this really long hair. I don't know, let's see here. if I can see that. It's actually like right on your chin. It's like coming out. It's very long. Just a burly man. You just, we need, uh, you just need to get cleaned up. Alright. We got us a clipper target. It's, why is it so small? Well, it looks this, I it looks it's full size one. on the internet. Alright. Well, it may be small, but it is cordless. Do you have a guard on there? Yes. <laughs> that would be terrible. I don't I don't think you've seen me without a beard in 15 years.
<laughs> Look, a stick bug. Becky! <laughs> it's okay. God, you just you about stepped me. on it. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming helps. <laughs> I thought I was stepping on something. I'm sorry. You were about oh. to step on this poor stick bug. Oh, drop down. This is what came off of me. I would say I'm mostly gray these days. Thank you, Rebecca. How, how does it look? No hair on my nose. Well, you can say. You look very nice. Oh yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> no hair on my nose. No hair on my mouth. How's my neck look? Much How's better. it look? Much okay. better. Much cleaner. I guess next time we need to remember to cut my hair before, before we, we leave. leave. Yes. Well, now we have this this nifty thing that can, can travel with us. Add I'm it gonna, to the list. I think I'm gonna keep that in our um. Ooh. Luggage. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe car, but yeah. <laughs> luggage. <laughs> <laughs> right with our salt. Emergency. Next to our salt yeah, shaker in the, in the car. The hair cutter. <laughs> oh, with deodorant too. There you go. Y'all know what we're talking about. Yep. Salt and deodorant. Two things you always need. In the glove department. Let's free. call it the salt department or the um, the deodorant department. That's because have because have you? Let's be honest. Have you ever put gloves in the glove department? No, you don't do that. No. Nope. Instructional manual. Like registration. That. Registration. No gloves. No gloves. I've never kept gloves. Never kept gloves in there. I'm about to pull a little. Well, it's actually a big. It's. I'm about to pull a big cat out. Cat out of the bag. Because it's going out of the bag tomorrow. We didn't expect that. It's kind of last minute. But I've written a book. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. And we got a lot more to say about it Yeah. in future vlogs, but for now we'll say uh, this will be on display at Homesteaders of America and folks will be able to pre-order for the first time. There's going to be all kinds of pre-order bonuses. We'll make the pre-order pre-order available to you guys soon enough mm -hmm. when we know more. But I would say to get the pre-order bonus you would just want to be on my email list. So for now, make sure you're on my email list. If you're not, or you're not sure, I'll put a link down in the description to join our email list. But, yeah. Cat's getting out of the bag manana. We had this printed off at the, at the local place. It didn't quite come out how we want, you know, we wanted it printed back to back, so hopefully we'll get a better one by tomorrow at a different print shop. Uh, but this will, this will be a hardcover book. It will teach you how to cultivate health and wellness by growing up. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm crazy excited. It's been since late, very late 2019 No. that we've been working it, on this. Or was it early 2020? Bearish. But I can't wait to talk to you guys more about this. Uh, join the email list. Supper time. Let's see what she has. Jonah's got the baby. Grandma's holding down the dishes. Mama, Mom had a great idea that she's made some chicken soup. Mama, could you get me a bowl? Mashed yeah, potatoes on top with a pat of butter. Nice. I got a little inspiration from the Liver King for this next move right here. What? What, are you gonna eat some butter? Watch this. The Liver King on Instagram. All right. It's gonna come out the other end a lot faster. <laughs> I think I'd rather just drink cream. But this will do. I know I said I'm no man. But I ate some butter. And I'm gonna drink some broth. And the gut's gonna be ready for this weekend. Besides, I need to have something so it's not awkward. Well, everybody else is eating supper. You are eating a lighter supper. How'd you like the thick lunch and the lighter supper? I actually really liked it. I like it. Well, why not? Because I'm not super hungry right now. Like this okay. feels like it's just enough to eat and like no. fill me up to get me through. And this totally could have been leftovers from lunch. Yeah, if it could have been. I think we might try this. What would you think about eating a big lunch instead of a big supper? We don't, but I don't. Having a big lunch and then eating leftovers from that lunch for supper. Or a soup. Yeah, or a soup. You can always have soups frozen. Yeah, I know. For when there is no leftovers. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. I can make, I can batch make soups and then freeze them in the super cubes and then 
we can just have like a variety of soups to pull out like whatever it. we want. I like it. Sounds like a plan.